50 Cent has announced that he will be executive producing the documentary on Diddy. Surviving Diddy, too much brother love can cost you. Now, it was this documentary that claimed, which we know wasn't true. Yeah, yeah, check this out. We don't, we don't talk about things that are nonsense. We don't even entertain nonsense, my brother. So we're not even going to even go there with all due respect. So it looks like Diddy is finally fighting back against 50 Cent after 50 Cent spent time dragging and mocking him. 50 eventually went a step too far when he announced a documentary on Diddy, and it looks like Diddy is not going to sit back and watch 50 tear him up like this. He is fighting back. Not only did Diddy slam the lawsuit, but he is also allegedly threatening to expose some skeletons that 50 has in his closet. It looks like things are about to get messy. John P. Diddy Combs, he has released this statement on Twitter and Instagram saying in part, enough is enough. For the last couple of weeks, I have sat silently and watched people try to assassinate my character, destroy my reputation and my legacy. Sickening allegations have been made against me by individuals looking for a quick payday. Let me be absolutely clear. I did not do any of the awful things being alleged. I will fight for my name, my family, and for the- So it looks like Diddy is sick and tired of people talking about him and all the allegations that have been made about him in the past couple of weeks because he is now slamming allegations and the people who brought the allegations against him. He is especially keeping the energy with 50 Cent, who has been trolling him ever since the scandal started and even before then. He said some pretty heavy words towards 50 and not only that, because the streets are saying that Diddy is allegedly threatening to pull a reverse you know on 50 Cent and expose some of the dark secrets that he has been hiding from the rest of the world. So it looks like 50 might have pushed Diddy too far, and it's not hard to see why Diddy would snap at 50 and start threatening him back. The beef between them allegedly goes way back to the late 90s when 50 Cent was new in the rap game. He had just released his hit single, How to Rob, and he was a very big deal in the industry. A lot of labels made offers to sign him, but he wanted to be signed to Diddy's Bad Boy Records. Unfortunately, Diddy didn't share the same enthusiasm and he turned 50 down. Now, to be fair to Diddy, this had nothing to do with 50 as a person. According to former G-Unit member Tony Yayo, it was because Diddy was nervous about signing an artist associated with guns and a gangster image following the death of Biggie Smalls. If there is one thing about Mr. 50 Cent in his early days, it was that he was big on this gangster image because that was kind of his brand a start, and Diddy wanted to protect his own bad boy label and brand. Tony Yayo also revealed that 50 Cent was able to get a meeting with Diddy, but it was clear from the start that Diddy only took the meeting as a formality because he had no intentions of signing 50. He wasn't even willing to keep an open mind. Tony Yayo said, We had a meeting with Diddy. It was me and 50 and he took the meeting out of respect. He had deals all over the table. I wasn't saying he was going to take the deal. He might have not, but Diddy didn't want to take the deal because of all the drama, but 50 was the hottest man on the planet. But things went well for 50 despite Diddy because he got signed by Eminem and went on to have a super successful career. However, he still holds a major grudge against Diddy and he takes his time to call him out and mock him every chance he gets. Knowing how petty 50 Cent is, he has been speaking a lot on Diddy. For example, when Diddy got arrested a couple of years ago for putting his hands on his son's coach at UCLA, 50 posted several memes on Instagram mocking him. However, Diddy had always maintained that there was no bad blood between him and 50, saying, I have no beef with 50. He loves me. Do you really think that's hate? When you really break it down, you've been out here a long time, you know he loves me when he does that. It's like funny to me. I don't really take it personal. I know he has a different sense of humor. He's just not in my life. We don't have to never cross paths, and I would never say nothing negative about him because that's just not me. Sometimes people that feel like they don't like you and they act like that, they really love you. There's also the fact that 50 keeps speaking on Diddy's sexuality and calling him gay, like the time he shaded Diddy on IG and said, sorry I can no longer help you guys. Soon you will all be gay and happy. You are now left under the leadership of Puffy Daddy. Reports the nearest rainbow. Shading someone while you're literally in a hospital bed means that you're fully committed to your beef. There's also the time he went on the breakfast club and said that Diddy was fruity. When he goes, when they do, when he do it, he says things he doesn't even know. What he's saying is like fruity. Now, 50 Cent also claimed that Diddy once tried to take him shopping. When we gonna get the chance to, you know, to kick it, like we could just hang out. 
We gotta kick it. We gotta kick it. This is Paul. Okay. You're telling me we gotta kick it. He's like, right. yo, why don't we like go shopping or something? I mean, like, I paid for it. And I was like, what the this nigga just say? And that time he claimed that Diddy's parties were not just parties, but giant freak offs where all kinds of wild stuff happened. He posted this picture of Lil Baby and said, see, this is why I don't go to no party Puffy and the mat. The F going on here. Get the F off my young man. What the F? So, when Cassie filed her lawsuit, we all knew that 50 was going to jump right on it, and he did not disappoint. He said, brother love, brother love, brother love, you out here looking crazy as a mug, said specifically in 2003 when she was only 17 years old, and the 11th grade Miss Dew was trafficked, and spy Mr. Combs, Mr. Pierre, and a third assailant. Now the third assent was enmity in the lawsuit, but the documents noted that the lawsuit is going to be updated soon, and a name will be revealed. Jay Nido claimed that Diddy and his friends proceeded to take turns to allegedly S.R. after Harvey Pierre walked up to her in a bar and picked her up from the court. Documents said on the evening in question, Miss Doe was with friends in a lounge when she was approached by Ho. She later learned it was Mr. Pierre. Pierre was with his own friends, including the third assailant. Mr. Pierre, the third assailant, and their friends were dressed in suits. Mr. Pierre repeatedly complimented Miss Doe's appearance, saying that she was among other things he then began talking about. His self-described best friend and brother, Mr. Combs, specifically Mr. Pierre continually stated that Mr. Combs would love to meet Miss Doe even called Mr. Combs and puts Miss Doe on the line. Mr. Coles told Miss D that he would love to meet her and that she should accompany. Mr. Pierre traveled to New York City in a private, the lawsuit had a lot to say about the bad things that Diddy and his associates allegedly did to Jane Doe on the day that the incident happened documents said when she was just a teenager, Miss Doe met Mr. Pierre on the third as a salon in a lounge in the Detroit, Michigan area while at the lounge. Mr. Pierre insisted that he was best friends with Mr. Combs, and he even called Mr. Combs with Miss Doe and Combs convinced Miss Doe who was half his age at the time to accompany Mr. Pierre and the third assailant on a private jet to come to his studio in New York City. Before they left for the private jet, Mr. Pierre smoked crack cocaine in a bathroom at the lounge, in which he also misted it by forcing her to give him oral action. The lawsuit then went on to talk about how the group of men allegedly gave the underage Jane Doe drugs and alcohol when they arrived at their location once she got so drunk that she was out of it. The men allegedly proceeded to send her the document, while at the studio, Miss Doe was subbed by Mr. Combs III as Selland and Mr. Pierre in that order. While Mr. Combs was saying Miss Doe, he complained that he could not get off unless she pinched his nipples as hard as she could. Mr. Combs then watched on as a third as Selland, who Miss Doe had not even realized had begun. Miss Doe, as she told him to stop after third as Selland was finished. Mr. Pierre took his turn and then forced her to give him oral action, during which Miss Doe was choking and struggling to breathe. The lawsuit also said when Mr. Pierre finished, he left Miss Doe in the bathroom alone. Miss Doe fell into fetal position and laid on the floor. Her privates were in pain. Finally, after a period of time, Miss Doe regained her bearings. However, she could barely stand up and had to be helped to walk out of the building and back into the car. She was taken back to an airport and flown back to Michigan. However, she was very limited in recollection of her transport home and only remembers being in her car sometime early in the morning. Y'all, this is all types and shades of messed up. And it kind of reminds me of Cassie's lawsuit where she claimed that Diddy would allegedly drug her up before forcing her to sleep with hired male escorts. In Cassie's lawsuit, she said Mr. Combs would always supply Miss Ventura and the escort with copious amounts of drugs before and during FAS. Miss Ventura was given ecstasy, cocaine, GHB, ketamine, marijuana, and alcohol in excessive amounts during FAS, which allowed her to disassociate during these horrific encounters. It became commonplace to get IV fluids in the days after FAS to recover from excessive substances pushed upon her. Now, Diddy finally decided to break his silence and speak on the lawsuit when he released a statement saying, Enough is enough. For the last couple of weeks, I have sat silently and watched people try to assassinate my character, destroy my reputation, and my legacy. Sickening allegations have been made against me by individuals looking for a quick payday. Let me be absolutely clear. I did not do any of the awful things being alleged. I will fight for my name, my family, and for the truth. You'll know how I said that 50 Cent was a troll, right? Well, if he went straight into the drama. 
Do you think that Diddy is just making threats? Drop your thoughts in the comments below and then check out this next video.